Hey guys, Catherine Shelton. So I've been working with a few Amazon sellers this week um, and I noticed a similar theme popping up again and again um, and it's a sense of feeling stuck, um, like just not quite knowing where to go to get to the next level in your business. Um, and also coupled with that is this sense of being overwhelmed. Um, and I think there's a couple of reasons for that. One of those reasons I think is really, really good in a way. Um, and it's the fact that there are so many opportunities. If you sell on Amazon or, or any other platform at the moment, there are so many opportunities. We used to kind of mostly do retail arbitrage, thrifting, um, and it seems like in the last few months, all these other ways of sourcing have become available, more available than ever before. Um, like categories that used to be really hard to get into. Now there's ungating services. Now there's people who will teach you how to get in, um, like clothing, shoes, jewelry, luggage, automotive, all those fun things. Um, so those have become a lot easier to get into. Coupled with that, there's more information on how to buy wholesale, um, how to get into private label, how to bundle. Um, all these different opportunities have become available as well as sourcing online. Um, the problem is it can be overwhelming, especially when you see when you're in Facebook groups and you see, hey, I made this much money sourcing from China, sourcing wholesale, uh, sourcing online. I made this much money selling in this category or this category or I made this much money just doing retail arbitrage. It can be so overwhelming when you see those figures um, and you look at your own figures and you look at what you're doing and you think, okay, well, maybe if I was doing this thing or this thing or this thing, I would be making those big figures. I would be making that big money. And I, I'm seeing people stressed. I'm seeing people kind of anxious about their figures, about their sales. Um, and I want to say don't worry too much at the moment. We know it's a hard season at the moment. It's spring, it's summer. Um, Amazon sales are slow. It's also conference season, which means that all the big sellers, or a lot of the big sellers, um, are talking about their numbers, their sales, their methods. They're giving out even more methods, which means more opportunities, but also more of these voices around your head. Not the voices in your head, but the voices around your head. Um, and it can be easy to feel kind of discombobulated when you look at your own sales and hear all this. So I've talked to a few people this week and I've had, um, I had another email today and I was like, how do I answer this? I feel like it's the same problem. So I thought I'd make a video because I'm sure there are other people who are experiencing this. Um, and I'm going to share what I've been telling, um, the people I've spoken to this week. The first thing, if you're not selling at all on Amazon um, or eBay and you're just getting started and you're feeling overwhelmed, then look at what you're good at. Look at what you know. If you haven't sold anything at all, sell what you know. Sell something you're familiar with and start with baby steps. That, that's the first thing I would say. Now, if you've been selling, this is where it gets interesting. This, this is where I've really got advice. If you've been selling on Amazon or eBay or whatever platform it is, but we're probably going to focus on Amazon, and you're feeling stuck, you're feeling like, I don't know how, where, which direction I should turn in. What should I do next? How do I get to bigger numbers? Look at what you've done already. This, this is like the key. Just take it all back a few steps and look at what you've done over your selling career. Look at the platforms you've sold on, whether it's eBay or Etsy or Amazon or Facebook. Look at the products you've sold. Look at the audiences you've sold to, your markets. Look at your target markets. Who have you sold to? Look at the way you've sold. Have you created listings? Have you created products? Have you created bundles? What is it that you've done? Or have you just stuck with retail arbitrage or online arbitrage and just sold other people's products? 
are you really good at thrifting? Are you really good at shopping? Are you really good online? Are you really good with plugins? What are you really good at? Are you a creative person? Do you like making things? Do you like putting things together? Um, what do you like doing? Are you good with people? Have you ever done wholesale? Go back and look at yourself. So you want to look at your products that you've sold. You want to look at how you've sourced. And you want to look at who you've sold to. And you want to look at how you've sold, which, which platforms you've used, and whether you've created listings or just gone against other people's listings. Now look at where you were successful. What have you done that was most successful? And if you look at that historically, that's going to be your clue to what you do next. Now the point isn't just go back and do it again, copy what you've done. Because we know how Amazon goes. We know that things change. We know that the platforms change. We know that other sellers will come on board and you, your prices will go pfft. And we know, like, we know that, 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 that nothing lasts forever on Amazon. Nothing lasts forever. People will copy you. Markets will change. Um, and that's fine. But what you've done before is a clue to what you should do next. And the point isn't to listen to every single person from outside of you saying, well, I made this much money through this method. I made this much money through this method. It doesn't really matter. The point is to find your next step. So if you are really successful with a particular product, can you find that product in a different manner? So I don't know if you sold party wear and you really enjoyed selling party wear, but now you can't buy it from that supplier anymore. Can you find another supplier? Or can you find it online? Or can you go to a wholesaler? Can you still sell that product? Or can you find a very similar product? Or if you had a lot of luck sourcing um, online, can you find another product that you can source online? If you are really good at retail arbitrage, can you find another store? I mean, it might be that simple, just source in a different place, but using the same methods. Um, the point is to change incrementally. If you sold well to a particular target audience, like kids or like maybe religious people or a particular group, can you look at why that worked? So what you need to do is look back what you did, what worked, why did it work, what made it successful? Was it the, your pictures? Was it the keywords? Was it the audience? Was it that you had a great way of sourcing products? What was it that worked? Um, and if you look at that, that might give you the clues to what you need to go in a future step. If you sold shoes on eBay and you were really good at selling shoes on eBay, maybe you need to get ungated in shoes on Amazon. If you've got something that sells really well on Amazon, Maybe you could try selling it on Facebook, the same product. Um, if you found a great niche audience on Amazon, maybe you could target that audience on Facebook or in, in an, on Etsy even. The point is to just keep growing. If you have a product that did really well, but now there's too much competition, maybe you could find a wholesale source for that product. Or maybe you could even private label your own version of that product. If you had a particular product, like party wear, maybe you had um, paper plates, or maybe you had like pencils. Maybe you could bundle those. Hey, I have to mention bundles, but you never know. If you had pencils that were really good product and now there's too many sellers, maybe you can put them with a pencil case. Maybe you can create a back to school kit. There's The point is there are just so many directions you can go in. And you can even, at an even higher level, start combining new things. So you can combine sourcing online or sourcing wholesale um, with bundling or with private label. Or th There's a lot of directions you can go in. And it's really exciting. It can be overwhelming. But the point is to look back, to breathe, to go back and look at what was successful for you. What worked for you and why did it work? And once you look back and you, you start thinking on those things, that's where you start finding the clues to where you go next. So it's not about listening to all these voices from outside of you. 
It's about going back and seeing what worked for you and how you can grow from there. So you kind of have to just incrementally, step by step, let the branches grow out. So like the new seller, when the new seller's starting out, they say, what am I good at? What do I know? What do I know about? Where do I start? You kind of have to do the same thing. Go back. What do you know? What has already worked for you? And then grow from there, step by step, in how you source, in the products, in your listings, in your markets. Grow outwards. Let the branches go up and out. Don't let the branches, like, smack you in the face from outside. That's that's not going to help. Um, but ultimately, your business model is going to be unique to you. Your business is going to be unique to you. And whatever you do, you're going to influence it. So use the clues you already have. Go back and look at what has worked well for you. And baby steps. Grow it upwards and outwards. You can do this.